and we thank you for joining us for what is an abbreviated version of the town hall tonight after we heard from the president in the last half hour. I'm Kate Welsh, chauffeur. Michael is on assignment tonight and Labor Day has come and gone. And this year there were fewer people working than we've seen in a long time. And that's where we're going to start tonight's town hall, looking at the country dealing with the most severe worker shortage ever. And a lot of the blame is going with the ongoing pandemic. One thing we know for sure, businesses are trying to hire people. In fact, it's happening at historic rates with almost 11 million job openings in July, according to new data released by the Department of Labor. So that's 2 million more jobs than people who actually need them. And it's starting to impact the supply chain as well and the consumer in very big ways. You may find yourself waiting in long lines at restaurants, at cash registers and stores or for something that you bought online. Those home renovations, you may be waiting for months. So armed with all this information, the big question is, if there are more job openings than unemployed workers, why aren't more people working and I want to thank Dottie Gallagher for joining us live on the town hall to talk about that. She's the president and CEO of the Buffalo Niagara Partnership and we're glad you're with us Dottie and this has been going on now for a year and a half but with schools reopening and enhanced unemployment benefits expiring this past Monday some think that the labor shortage could start to ease up in some cases allowing parents caring for their remote learning kids to return to work. So what are you seeing here in Western New York and what do you predict is going to happen here? Are people going to more people going to go back to work soon? Well, we hope so, but I have to tell you, uh, when you look at the actual numbers, it is a little frightening, uh, and in particularly how it's impacting women. Uh, uh, 1.8 million women have left the workforce, and uh, there are reasons why some of them may not come back. You've hit on one of them. Our school's going to stay reliably open. Uh, I think there's been tremendous pressure on families. We see some real changes in the way people want to work. Uh, we have some people moving to places like Buffalo for a lower cost of living so that only one parent has to work. Uh, so it's really, I think it's too soon to, to tell what, what really the workforce is going to look like. But without question, it is not going to look like, uh, you know, as many as people as we need to be in the workforce right now, for sure. Do we have any sense of what the reason for the shortage is? Because we often hear, well, they can make more um, through unemployment. So is that it? Or are people kind of reevaluating what they want to do with their lives, being a little more selective maybe about where they choose to work? You know, I don't I don't think it's that. I mean, I think there's some of that, but that is not the real issue here. The real issue is what you've touched on, sort of the issue of daycare, the issue of, of stable families. Those are real issues. But let's not forget, prior to the pandemic hitting, we were we were facing here in Buffalo what we called uh, a, the gray tsunami. A lot of people approaching retirement age and the pandemic accelerated many of those retirements in some key fields like healthcare and education. People who were over 60 saying, I'm out of here. I don't have to stay. So we knew that this was going to be a challenge with, with the talent and workforce. And we see now lower levels of work part, workforce participation. So it's really sort of the worst of all worlds right now. So what do we do about it? I think businesses have to adjust. You've talked about some of the things they're already doing, investing in, in innovation and efficiency, having to reduce their hours, hiring and paying people more money. Uh, but again, even that is not a solution uh, for some of low wage workers. Some of these higher paid hourly rates actually close them out of some of the benefits they get from the government so they can't afford to take some of those jobs. So this is a mess. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, and it's not going to be solved easily, but it is going to require all of us to sort of figure out, you know, how we can get people back to work in the best way possible. We have about a minute left and I want to ask you kind of about the culture shift in all this, because while most businesses want workers to return to the office, at least some of the time, a Harris poll survey done back in May shows about 40% of workers want to work from home full time. Has it been difficult for companies to find employees who really want to come back to an office and are companies kind of having a hard time adapting now that they're not necessarily forced to adapt? I have to tell you, I think companies have done an amazing job uh, dealing with this situation, and there is going to be a lot more hybrid and remote work where it's possible. I mean, some jobs, obviously, that's not possible, but even in our own uh, organization, we're going to a more flexible work policy. That's what employers need to do, and they've really been on the cutting edge of making that happen, trying to retain the valuable talent that they have and not lose it. 
We've been chatting with Dottie Gallagher, the president and CEO of the Buffalo Niagara Partnership. Dottie, thanks again for joining us. Thank you.